Hello, good evening and welcome to the Development Control Committee of the 9th of October. Um, it's good to see so many members of the public in attendance taking interest in this meeting this evening. Uh, just a couple of uh, announcements uh, given the scale of interest we've got this evening. Uh, can I ask uh, everyone, including councillors, officers and those in the public gallery, to switch off mobile phones, uh, not put them on silence or vibrate but off. They do interfere with the microphone system and we'd all like everyone to be heard this evening. Um, also for members and officers, um, this meeting is being recorded tonight. Uh, so could uh, everyone please speak into the um, microphones directly so uh, otherwise you won't be heard. <laughs> it's on its way, Frank. Um, I've received apologies for absence this evening uh, from Councillor Sue Dibble and Councillor Don Kappelman, but Councillor Frank Rust is standing in their place. So we will start, <laughs> as we always do, with declarations of interest. I'll start on my left. Uh, Councillor Frank Rust, Councillor Jennifer Evans, Councillor Clive Grasson, Councillor Alan Cheney, Councillor John Marsh, uh, Councillor Alan Dibbs, uh, uh, Councillor Diane Bedford. Councillor Rod Cooper, Councillor um, Bruce Thomas, uh, Councillor Brian Parker, no. and I have none either. Thank you. Uh, the second item is to approve the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 11th of September. Uh, um, are the committee satisfied for me to sign these off as a true record of our meeting? Thank you very much. And the next item on our agenda is section uh, is section A, future items for committee. Um, this is on page 16 in the agenda, and those are for noting. And section B is petitions. Um, members will note that as well as the petition noted on the agenda, there is also a supplementary uh, petition received in relation to Five Bridge Road, Farnborough, and I ask that those be noted as well. And apologies, um, uh, uh, I've been informed there's, this, uh, there's a safety announcement which I want to make that, um, just in case, uh, the fire alarm here is a continuous ringing bell. If the fire alarm sounds, please make your way safely out of the building use, using either the main entrance, the fire exit to my left, or if those are unavailable, proceed down the corridor to the right of these rooms and use the exits adjoining the ladies' toilet. So I've finished my uh, hostess bit there, and we can move on with the agenda. Um, we start with agenda item four, which relates to the Tumble Down Dick, uh, 227 Farnborough Road, Farnborough. And uh, I believe that Sarita Jones will be taking us through this one. Over to you, Sarita. Thank you, Chairman. The site will be very familiar to all members on this committee. Uh, it is the Tumble Down Dick Public House. It is located on the western side of Farnborough Road. And here we see it in context. It is within Farnborough Town Centre. It is bounded here by the Farnborough Road, a dual carriageway that leads up to the Clock House Roundabout. You have two Victoria Road here, which is a, I think it's a five-storey block of serviced apartments. Fir Grove Parade here. This is the Sainsbury's car park. Um, and this is the Kingsmead multi-storey car park. At this point, I would just like to draw members' attention to the trees here, 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 and here. Um, as a tree preservation order has been made on these, on these trees. The scheme before us this evening is for the partial demolition of the existing building, demolition of all outbuildings, the refurbishment of the building which is to be retained, which is this bit here, the erection of single-storey side and rear extensions, <coughs> all to facilitate the use of the building as a restaurant and a takeaway. The proposal also includes a new access onto Farnborough Road here. It's in the location of the existing access, which is to be remodelled and widened. This will lead into the existing parking area, which is here, 
and beyond to what will become a drive-through lane here, which splits in this location here, comes round here, and then exits here. The trees that I drew members' attention to are here, 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 and here. And the reason why um, we didn't look at a tree preservation order before, when 2 Victoria Road was being considered, was because the development didn't actually encroach onto the root protection areas. Um, this scheme has potential because of the surfacing in this area here, and consequently the order was made as there was potential threat. Right, just to clarify actually what is being proposed this evening, this is an extension, this is the hall extension that took place when Courage um, owned the premises. Um, the building that is to be retained is this element here. So that is predominantly the two-storey building that you see today. The single-storey elements and a part two-storey element in this area here are to be demolished, together with all existing outbuildings. And this is what is being proposed. The most recognisable parts of the building, which are these and these, are being retained. The single storey elements, oops, the technology is slightly failing me there. Uh, the single storey elements that are to be built is this area here. Within this roofscape, we will also have the plant and machinery that are required for the functional, function of a restaurant and a takeaway. You have an entrance from the car park uh, for residents of there. The main entrance in the front stays pretty much as is. There's a small projection there for the entrance there. And then at the back, you have the pickup for the drive-through. In this area here, you have the storage and the corralling area for the storage of, uh, of goods for the use. And this is looking at it, uh, looking at the south elevation that's being proposed. This is the layout. You have the kitchen in this area here, storage as mentioned before. A new substation is going in this location here. Um, there's dining in this area here, staff facilities here, toilets here, and as mentioned before, the plant machinery within the roof here. And this is the building that we see today. Um, it has been empty since February 2008 when the spirit group chose voluntarily to close it. Uh, it has not reopened since. And if we just look at it looking towards the north, towards the clock house roundabout. And this is looking from the car park. So as you can see, the extensions over time have been completed in a rather ad hoc manner. Uh, this gives a better idea. We have this bit, we have this bit, we have this bit. And then we have the hall. Uh, the new access is to be in this area here. Historically, they have built a, a pub garden for one, but the actual ex dropped curb extends quite away. And this is a visual representation of how the scheme um, would, be, would look if, it, if the permission is implemented. The report addresses various issues um, that we have identified. We have looked at the principle of development. We have looked at it in the context of the MPPF. We've looked at it in the context of the Rushmore core strategy, our safe local plan policies, and also the supplementary planning document and the prospectus on Farnborough Town Centre. Um, as you will see from the report, we have concluded that in, as a land use, it is acceptable and appropriate in this location. Indeed, within the MPPF, it says a drive through restaurant is indeed an appropriate use within a town centre. <coughs> we have looked at, within the report at the community right to buy and also the designation of the building as an asset of community value. Um, we have taken legal advice on this issue. And as you will see from the report, we are giving little weight to it in the determination of this application this evening. The building, um, as you may be aware, is on the council's list of buildings of local importance. Um, you will see in, in the report, we actually have given quite an update, uh, detailed 
explanation of the history as to how we've arrived at this point, including the referral to uh, English Heritage and Department of C Culture, Media and Sport to do with statutory listing. We have looked at the proposal in terms of its impact on the building of local importance and are of the view that the proposal will secure the long-term future of the building, it will rationalise built development within this site and it, will and it will retain the most recognisable parts of the building. It will also be clear what is the older part of the building and what is new development. Um, as I'm sure man many will agree, the existing building and site at the moment makes little contribution to the character of the area. Um, the outbuildings to the rear uh, are flat roofed and make very little contribution to the rear of the site. The proposal is considered to integrate um, the old and the new and is considered to be a and is considered to be a positive benefit to the character of the area. The site is to be re-landscaped um, to reflect the Farnborough Rose designation as a green corridor and landscaping will take place throughout the site. We have also looked at the impact on neighbours. Um, the closest neighbours are in two, oh, sorry, in two Victoria Road here, which are serviced apartments. We have had regard to the op opening hours that the site has currently as their licence hours. And we've also been mindful that obviously it is a town centre location, but it ha it's a balance between the amenities of residents and the location of the site and the nature of the use. As members will see from the report, we are recommending an hours of operation restriction between 6 a.m. and midnight. We've also looked and given a lot of consideration to the highway considerations associated with this proposal. Um, obviously, you will see here, we've got the remodeled access. We have looked at the internal operation of the site in terms of parking, deliveries, queuing for the drive-through, ensuring that all access and exit arrangements are safe and acceptable in highway safety terms. Um, I would also draw members' attention that the delivery vehicle for this site will actually use the secondary access at the north of the site. The applicant has provided, uh, has submitted a transport assessment with the application and also has submitted detailed um, supplementary information as well. Uh, the transportation strategy officer um, has considered this in detail and is satisfied with the impact on the highway network and also the internal operation of the site. Uh, as you will see from the report, a BAT survey was submitted. Uh, it didn't raise any particular nature conservation issues and no objection is raised to the proposal in this regard. In respect of the water environment, um, the Environment Agency and Thames Water have both been consulted. Um, they were sat satisfied that there were no issues to be addressed in terms of flood risk or capacity for sewage, and in both regards they raised no objection. One of the objections that came through very strongly with the representations that were made to us related to health and well-being, particularly relating to obesity, um, having regard to the nature of the applicant's business. Um, we did take legal advice on this issue, um, and as you will see, the conclusions that we reached in our um, report says that we have looked at it, um, but given little weight. We did receive a... <laughs> Yes, sorry about that. Um, so so from, from that point of view, one of the issues that we did have actually was um, um, a gentleman just raised the query in the distances that we had quoted in the report. We have assumed that children crossing the road will use the pedestrian crossing. Um, but in... But... But... But, but, but... But, but, but... We did do, uh, uh, we did do a, a measurement from, if you're coming from the entrance here going north and using the dropped curve that's there, the distances are between 420 and 562 metres in distance from the front door to St Peter's School 
because the issue was raised about the proximity of fast food restaurants to schools. I would point out that this is a town centre location. There are other food and drink uses in the area. Um, indeed, on the other side, which is actually beyond the centre, there's, I think there's three or four. Um, as you will see, the conclusion we reached was um, this didn't have significant weight in planning terms. We've also looked at the issue of crime and disorder. Um, we certainly looked um, at the issue with Hampshire Police, and we consulted them on this application. Um, we were also mindful with the representations that objections had been raised because of the McDonald's operation at Farnborough Gate. Um, as later on on this agenda, we have got another application relating to that site, but the issues related to donutting within the actual main car park rather than issues that were specifically related to the operation by McDonald's. Notwithstanding that, within the scheme we have CCTV and we have lighting and the Antarctic Constabulary are generally satisfied with the proposal and have raised no objection in this regard. Um, in this day and age, we have also looked at the issue of climate change, renewable energy, um, set out in the report and no issues are raised in this regard and is considered to be satisfactory. The site is, may, is considered to make appropriate provision for people with disabilities and no objection is raised in this regard. Members will see from the amendment sheet there are some updates and some corrections. Uh, we have received um, a couple, three more representations from people that had made representations before, um, but they felt strongly that they wanted to make them again. We've just made some minor corrections to the report just to make it clearer. And we are looking to delete condition 21 because it's actually duplication of condition 20. Um, other than that, members, the recommendation is to grant subject to the unilateral undertaking as set out in the report. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Sarita. Um, just to say to members of the public gallery, thank you very much for attendance and for your interest shown in this. Um, please do allow officers to be heard. I know no one's overstepped that mark so far, but just to bear it in mind so that we can hear those who are taking part in the meeting. Um, so we have two people wishing to speak on this application. Uh, the first, I've got Ms. Fran uh, Bouchamp, um, who will be speaking against the application. Thank you. Sorry, just before you start, just as a reminder, and I'll remind the other speakers as well, that we've, you have three minutes for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. I'm speaking on behalf of the community <coughs> opposing this application. We know you need evidence to support your decision, and there is more than sufficient grounds for refusal this evening. The planning officer's recommendations have cherry-picked local policy directives that are pro-development, -de ignoring other strategic documents that would enable you to refuse this on planning grounds. RBC, you are defending your own decision before a judge that this building is an asset of community value and a heritage asset. This legislation is not just about our right to bid, yet your planning officer in his report says the ACV has no weight. This is an outright contradiction. This proposal will cause immense traffic problems and the A325 has already been identified in your own consultation reports that this road is at capacity with 23,000 movements daily. It also states that Rushmore should improve town centre pedestrian and cycle access. By approving a drive-through at this location, you will have to answer to your constituents as to why you have ignored your own evidence and created chaos on this major artery. McDonald's are hijacking the notion of community asset and it's laughable that the planning officer would endorse this. Rushmore have a duty of care for the health and well-being of its population. Many councils have adopted government guidelines preventing such a development and its considerable impact on essential services, in particular our health services. Rushmore has an unusually high obesity level for the southeast of England, particularly in reception age children and now we've discovered in year six children, yet this application supports a soft place centre, thus encouraging our borough's children to eat more fast food. It is a travesty that the planning officer has endorsed the threat made by the owners that they would deliberately and willfully continue to neglect our heritage asset for the remaining term of the lease. This contravenes the Town and Country Planning Act and enables the owners to hold Farnborough to ransom. 
Finally, we have to remind you that since the closure of the Tumbly, Farnborough is without a dedicated entertainment and music venue to serve our population and high-value visitors and business guests of the town. Why are we forcing ourselves to be the poor relation of neighbouring Surrey towns when we have such potential in terms of arts and music within our own borough? We have provided you all with a report stating why we believe the planning officer's recommendation are biased, and I'm sure you've read it and given evidence as to why, based on planning law. There are valid reasons to refuse this application, and by doing so, McDonald's will no longer be contractually obliged to continue with this unpopular development. Do not be scared to let this go to appeal. There are many precedents where similar proposals have been rejected and the decision upheld at appeal. You do not have to accept the planning officer's recommendations. There are viable alternatives for the future of this site. We have the plans and financial commitments to restore this heritage asset to the community. We do not believe the planning office has been fair in their assessment. Remember your duty to the electorate and vote no to this proposal and save the tumble down dick. Very much. We also have a speaker against this application, Mr. Mike Williams. Speaker. Sorry, my apologies. A speaker for this application. We've brought down the speaker against Mr. Mike Williams, speaking on behalf of McDonald's. Uh, Mr. Williams, just reminds again that you have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mike Williams, and I'm head of acquisitions for McDonald's in the UK. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to the committee tonight. I want to use this opportunity to reassure you about McDonald's commitment to Farnborough and talk briefly about how a new restaurant will bring jobs, investment and economic growth to the local area. The proposed restaurant will complement our existing store at Farnborough Gate Retail Park, which will remain open. We own a long leasehold interest with over 100 years remaining. This development will bring life to a building that has remained vacant for over five years. We have listened to the community and revised our plans to retain much of the existing property. The proposed scheme represents a total investment of over £5 million. The pub's existing lease to the Spirit Group has 10 years remaining at a rent of over £100,000 per year. If it were viable, the pub would be open today. We understand that the pub has historically played its part in the community. A new restaurant will confirm continue to benefit the whole community. <laughs> we have indicated that the proposal will provide at least 65 new sustainable jobs for the local area. In reality, this is likely to be over 100. These are flexible jobs for local people which will fit around the hours they want to work. Please, can we allow the speaker to be heard? Thank you. As a company, we invest over £43 million a year in staff training. All employees have access to a range of qualifications to help them develop. The courses range from foundation degrees to apprenticeships. Our commitment to Farmer will, of course, go well beyond jobs and skills. We pride ourselves on the positive role we play in our communities. A new restaurant will offer new opportunities for community organisations across Farnborough. Our existing restaurants already work with a number of football clubs in the local area, including Farnborough Town FC. The new restaurant will work with the Ronald McDonald House in Guildford, which provides a home away from home for families with children in hospital. As a company, we recognise there could be concerns about the impact of new restaurants on the local environment. We work very hard to make sure the area around our restaurants is litter-free. We are a founding member... <laughs> We are a founding member of Keep Britain Tidy's Love Where You Live campaign, under which over 150 community litter picks have already taken place this year. Staff at all our restaurants also carry out a minimum of three daily cleanups in the immediate area, picking up all litter, not just McDonald's packaging. I hope you can see that we are committed to investing in Farnborough by creating sustainable jobs and playing a positive role in the local community. 
our plans will also reinvigorate an important piece of community heritage and bring life to a site that has been vacant and unused. Sorry, could I ask you to round up, please? Okay, thank you very much, and I hope that you'll improve, approve this application. Thank you very much to both the speakers. Um, we'll now move the debate on to the uh, councillors. I have already had an indication from Rod Cooper. Um, I will ask councillors to um, try and um, sum their, co their comments up in, um, in one go, because I know there'll be a lot of interest in this one. So I've got Councillor Rod Cooper, followed by Councillor Clive Grattan. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, and uh, I found the comments on both sides very interesting and useful tonight. Firstly, I'd like to say that it, it is a great idea for a music venue in Farnborough. Friends of the uh, Tumble Down Dick have uh, ran a very, very good campaign. But I have one question. Where were they five years ago when the pub was initially closed? And why is it only now that they're coming to light? The building state from a walk around that I... Uh, the, Excuse me, please allow the councillors to be heard. Thank you. The building itself is in a very, very poor state of repair following a walk round that I took the other day or along the outside of it. The uh, inside, I understand from the report, is equally as bad. And to leave this building as it is, is not an option. Something has got to be done with this building. Looking at the plans that are on the table today, the, uh, as far as I can see, with the greatest regard, respect to the Tumble Down Dick uh, group, there is only one credible plan on the table at this moment in time. As far as health issues are concerned, I'd like to just make one comment that comes up time after time after time. We're not a nanny state, and it is not for this council or the planning committee to prescribe what sort of restaurants can and cannot be in Farnborough. It's more the responsibility of the parents to educate their children as to what they can and cannot eat. As far as the traffic is concerned, I'm given to understand that the traffic flow will increase at peak times by a maximum of around 82 cars per hour. Now, if you break that down, I think you'll find that 82 cars uh, an hour is not going to be a significant increase on what's already there. In my view, one organisation that's here tonight has no credibility, and it's not McDonald's. Oh. I, I'd also like to uh, point out that a number of... Uh, people from council, including um, David Clifford, Councillor David Clifford, and Sir Gerald Howarth, have been involved in, in care for this community and this project in particular. I would also like to, like to say that I'm disappointed that Bridehall have not been working with the council a lot sooner to maintain or, or resolve some sort of future for this for this site. Uh, I'd also like to say a, a thank you to McDonald's for their interest and in bringing this building in back into, into potential use. Uh, however, McDonald's, oh, there is one thing I would like to stress. I am not a great fan of zero hour contracts and hope that you'll bear that in mind when you are employing local people. Um, I have one further point I'd like to make, and that is that I feel, uh, especially in this photograph, that there is a need for a central reservation fence to stop people running across the road from one side of the road to the other. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Cooper. Uh, I have Councillor Clive Grattan, Councillor John Marsh, then Councillor Alan Cheney. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a couple of concerns about this secondary exit. I can't see it anywhere on the plans, and if you could indicate it to me at all. Oh, 
Oh, right there. Okay. We have a dog up the right. I can see it now. <laughs> um, also, I was concerned about the the actual possession way into the place. It's only seen to be from the actual car park. I can't see anyone walking from the clock house lane up to the place. I was wondering if there's any other proposed exits like into the um, car park behind or such like. In addition, it said in the paperwork that um, there was additional archways and such like in the building. I wonder what sort of course they would do to maintain them archways or to um, take them down and replace them so it's still recognised within the area. And um, that's the comment you've got, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Grass. And I'm going to revert to officers at this point to allow them to come back to the points which you've raised and which um, Councillor Rod Cooper raised as well. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I welcome the opportunity to clarify a couple of points of members. Um, various discussions took place with Sainsbury's because we asked about a pedestrian link going through, um, but Sainsbury's refused. Uh, McDonald's were prepared to put the link through, um, but because we had a landowner who was not prepared to enable access through their car park, um, that, that idea didn't come to fruition. Um, in terms of the uh, access arrangements, um, just to clarify, left in, left out, and this access up here is only for the delivery lorry. Um, the exit, sorry, yeah, the exit. Um, we have the tree here, but it, the tree's already there. It's nothing that is new. No, no, it doesn't foul. No, it's true. It doesn't, it doesn't foul the access, no. No. In terms of the uh, arches, uh, arches are to be reinstated as part of the new extension um, and we are satisfied with the works that are taking place to the building of local importance. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. So I have Councillor John Marsh, Councillor Alan Cheney, the Councillor Brian Parker. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, can I uh, congratulate Rod Cooper, Councillor Rod Cooper, on going into bat first. <laughs> not an easy task in a, on an application like this where there are so many people who are objecting to this particular application. One of the things which I found in the many um, letters and emails of, against this application, although there have been a couple in favour of it, is the way in which it is, Tumbledown Dick is called the Hist Historic Centre of Farnborough. Quite honestly, I think that's rubbish. The historic centre of Farnborough is a half a mile to the south, which is the Fast Museum and the old wind tunnels, half a mile to the north, which is Farnborough Abbey and the crypt for Napoleon III, and about half a mile to the east, which is St Peter's Church. Now, the fact that there may have been there probably was an inn on this site for a couple, two or three hundred years. Doesn't mean to say that this building was there three hundred years ago. It almost certainly wasn't. The only piece of this building which is of any age is probably 1860s, 1870s, which is the front of it. Excuse me, well, please there, allow the councillors to be heard. Thank you. There is absolutely no evidence that any of this building dates back to 1650. Excuse me, can I please ask, the, can I please ask members of the public gallery to allow councillors to be heard? Thank you. It is, it, it is, it Excuse is me, please, this is a council meeting which we're making open to the public, but I do want councillors to be heard throughout. Thank you. It is all hearsay. There may have been... There, excuse me. It, excuse me. I have asked nicely, please do remain quiet whilst councillors are speaking. I, I, I'm happy with some level of noise, but I do need to hear those who are contributing. Thank you. I will exceed that there has been an inn on this site for the, that length of time, but not this building. I had an email from somebody 
who refer to it, the um, McDonald's, as a hostelry. And I replied saying, I found that an interesting term to use. However, my dictionary refers to hostelry as an inn. And if you look up the definition of an inn, it is a house for providing food for travellers. Which is what it, this is, has been and McDonald's would like it to be. The point is that this building has been vacant since 2008. And absolutely nothing has been done by really anybody um, since then until McDonald's came along. And I suspect that the, the real problem is that the objections are not so much against um, reuse of the building, but against McDonald's as such. One question which I wanted to ask, which I think has been um, answered, um, is about the deliveries. It says that the deliveries will take place approximately three times a week and you will use the supplementary exit to get the vehicles out. Um, this must be a very similar manoeuvre to that used by the petrol tankers that service the garage, which is just, um, what, 100 yards along the road. So they, they presumably manage okay, so presumably the McDonald's vehicles will be able to manage as well. Um, as Councillor Cooper said, um, a lot has been said about the health and welfare of children in the area, but that is not a planning matter. Our planning matter is whether or not this is a suitable reuse of this site. <coughs> I don't believe, I've yet to see any evidence that any alternative is available for this site. I mean, much has been said about friends having money um, to, re, to refurbish it. Are they really saying they've got three or four million pounds available? I doubt it. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, I think, <laughs> sorry, speaking in advance. I, I would like to see this building retained, certainly the facade, and brought back into some kind of use. We don't want another long period when this building is um, showing a very tatty side of Farnborough. And I think the McDonald's application is worthy of support um, in order to get this building back into an economic and viable use. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Marsh. I've got Councillor Alan Cheney, Councillor Byron, Councillor Byron Park, and then Councillor Frank Rust. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I would firstly like to compliment the officers of uh, Rushmore Borough Council for a detailed and concise report. I would also like to congratulate the Friends of the Tumbo and Dick for a very comprehensive campaign. I have two general concerns and one personal. Um, both of the two issues are very small in the overall scheme. Um, firstly, the amount of parking, 34 spaces um, when our policy requires 53. I see from other models that uh, this said it would be sufficient, but it's at least directly onto the arterial road of Farnborough, I question the model that was used. As no path is available to the Sainsbury's car park to the rear of the Tumbledown Dick, only the multi-storey car park will be used with direct access. Secondly, regarding the amount of traffic at peak times, the traffic backs up to a bus stop past the petrol station, adding a restaurant with such a high turnover of vehicles to an already busy, busy area, which caused more delays and traffic jams. I think the traffic plan. I think the traffic plan is being generous at best, as we have seen the amount of delays fast food restaurants causes at Farmer Gate. We will just. We will just be moving one problem from one place to another near a town. Right, personally, I was a pensioner of the Tumble Down Dick some 29 years ago, when it was a lively, vibrant pub. But I revisited the tumble down to see a band just before it closed and was disappointed to see the pub was in such a poor state of repair. Having closed the tumble down dick in 2008 with a view of a major refurbishment which never happened, happened to the detriment of the community, this much loved prominent and iconic building within Farmer Town Centre has been left to disrepair by both Punch Taverners and Bride Hall. Yeah. 
The state of the tumble down is far beyond the financial realms of any local business or residents to repair and bring back into use, leaving only big business developers who to afford the price tag. I'm sure Punch Taverners would pass the uh, tumble down back um, before the remaining 10 year lease expires, as most companies occupying buildings are responsible for dilapidation and repair before handing the building back to the landlords and expenses um, they would not want to incur. Punch Taverners, Bridehall and the Spirit Group seem to content to leave the, the tumble down empty for the next 10 years if planning consent is not granted tonight um, for the fast food restaurant, in effect holding Rusmore planning to ransom. This shows a total lack total lack of commitment to this iconic building and to farmers' regeneration to local residents. If they want to attract local residents to the fast food restaurant, they are going the wrong way about things. If they cared about Farmer and the Tumbledown Dick, they would bring the building back into use as a venue the local residents require. If Punt Taverners and Bridal cared about the Tumbledown, then a full, very small investment on their behalf could make the building reusable. If they felt they did not want to invest, they could offer the building, now listed as an asset of community value, under the Localism Act 2011, allowing the community the right to bid. Yeah. Or, or even back on the open market, give the residents the opportunity to reclaim the building. Yeah. Although the application fits with our, straw, our core strategy, common sense should prevail. Yeah. Turn the tumble down dick into a fast food restaurant, I feel, is totally inappropriate and would not be supporting this application. Thank you very much, Councillor Cheney. Um, what's going to revert to officers in, in view of the number of substantial points that you've raised on these, on these issues? Uh, yeah, so uh, first I'll go to Jim Pettit to deal with the transport concerns which were raised. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there were two or three particular points there, if I, I, I take them as, as they were. I mean, sort of what, first one is I start on the um, car parking capacity. Um, it's quite right, we have a parking standard. Um, for commercial uses, our parking standard is what is referred to as a maximum parking standard. So essentially, you cannot provide more than the maximum parking standard. That for it is based upon the dining area, 264.9 metres squared dining area, and one space for every five square metres comes out as a maximum of 53 spaces. Absolutely right. The point here is that we have to look at this particular type of use. Um, we know that it isn't a, a standard restaurant that we, ex that we see in, in, in a town centre, that we see in other, other locations. We know it's a drive-through, we know there's fast food, we know people don't actually stay there as long as they would in other places. So it's a different situation. What we've, we've always considered, and we would do with any other similar application, we would look at similar uh, operations, and that's what we've asked McDonald's to do. Um, they know their business, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, they, they know what happens elsewhere. We, we've seen uh, from them, they've given us um, a comparison site at Strood um, with a, a dining area of a similar size with a car park that has 37 spaces. That car park only reaches a, a maximum oc occupancy of 29 cars. I think, so, so a, pro a, a car park with 34 spaces is certainly sufficient for the, the size of this, this uh, particular facility. On the traffic impact, um, yes, I think it, it is certainly a fact and, and that there will be more trips generated from this proposal than there would been, have been from a public house. Um, and as I think has already been, been said by one of the councillors, um, at the peak periods, and that's all we're interested in really, is does it, does it work at peak times? At peak times, the prediction is, and it's a Friday evening, which happens to be the peak time for McDonald's, is, is around 86, 80, 90 vehicles an hour, which is just over uh, one a minute, um, one between one and two a minute. Now, what we've got to do is, some work's been done, we've asked the... Um, uh, McDonald's transport consultants to carry out some further studies and they've carried out um, uh, counts and queuing um, uh, determination on the um, roundabouts at Clockhouse roundabout and Pinehurst roundabout. They've done an ARCA-D analysis on there. There is an issue with that, to be honest with you, that, um, that it, the, the roundabouts are already at times fairly near capacity and um, because of the, of the nature of, of the way they're operating at the present time. 
Um, and so that, that exercise hasn't been totally conclusive, I have to say. But what we have to, to consider is we have roundabouts there that are currently operating with, with 1,200 vehicles an hour, where we're getting an extra one or two vehicles per minute. Further to that, what we also have to take into account, I think it is only right we take into account, because we've asked McDonald's to give us this information, they haven't done an analysis of their customers, of the trips that their customers use when they go to their restaurants. And it's for, from their surveys of their customers, it's not a, it's not a, a one-off trip. People, aren't on the, people already on the network will use the McDonald's restaurant. So whilst the analysis has been done looking at, we're talking about 80, 90 vehicles um, at peak times um, an hour, that can be reduced by a, around a further 70% because they, they, those people, a majority, a lot of those people that will go into the McDonald's at those peak times will already be on the, on the network. So we, we've got to be careful we're not double counting. I, I, it, uh, with that in mind, uh, I, I'm sat quite satisfied that um, the, the traffic impact of this proposal is very minimal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Jim Pettit. Can I just clarify in relation to a specific point raised by Councillor Cheney then? Uh, 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 are you stating your other, that your advice is that this does meet our park standard? <coughs> Thank you. For those who didn't hear that, uh, um, the advice was yes. Um, I have um, further indications from Councillor Brian Parker, Councillor Frank Rust, and then Councillor Diane Bedford. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've sat here very quietly listening to uh, different people um, speak. Um, I was interested to hear um, Fro Beauchamp. Um, uh, sorry, I apologise if I've not um, um, called you by your correct name, um, but um, we've never met. So, But what amazes me, looking around the audience that we've got here watching us today, five years ago, what ages were they? You know, it, 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 it just, I'm sorry, but it just amazes me because there's a certain young lady behind here that stood up and was shouting like mad, and I'm sure she can only be about 20 now. Oh. Oh. So, so uh, I mean, we've, we've, we've got to look at it. We've got to look at it. I'm sorry. Please, can I, uh, please, can Councillor Byron Parker be heard? Thank you. We've got to look at it from the aspect of what it is now and not what it was five years ago. Five years ago, it was shut down. And it was shut down because of lack of use. And the food, and the food was atrocious. That is, that has come. Excuse me, please. We I do want this to be able to remain a meeting open to the public, so can we please allow Councillor Brian Parker to be heard? I'm allowed to, to say exactly what I'm saying. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I can only reiterate what my grandson says. You know, um, and he was a regular goer to um, the area we're talking about. Anyway, as, as, as far as the Empress Ward Councillor is concerned, um, to say that the elderly people uh, were in favour of this, um, that isn't the story I was getting from uh, two of the main um, elderly people's residents in Victoria Road. Um, they were dreading um, the, the Friday nights and the Saturday nights uh, because it wasn't what was going on in the public house, it was what was going on in Victoria Road afterwards. Um, and it wasn't the boys that were making the noise, it was the girls using rather uh, inclement language. Excuse me, please, can I have silence in the public gallery? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can, I can only pass on what our, our constituents tell us. Um, this is what I've been told, and this is what I believe. Um, so I'm, I'm in favour of McDonald's coming here, and I think it will do Farnborough great.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Parker. Thank you very much, Councillor Parker. Uh, can I have, uh, we'll have Councillor Frank Ross, then Councillor Diane Bedford, then Councillor Roland Ibs. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm just going to concentrate on one aspect, um, um, and it's health. Um, I, as you probably know, I've been involved with the NHS for about 30 years now uh, as, a, as a volunteer and 10 years as um, Chairman of the South East Region Community Health Councils um, and Links, Chairman of Links, Hampshire. Um, and I've been, in, and as that, that position, I was involved with the formulation of the Health and Improvement Plan uh, for the County Health and Wellbeing Board. Um, obesity is, is a big subject and it's really important. Um, and I don't think, if I look at what we've said about policy determining issues, um, about the health and wellbeing, consider little weight should be given. Well, I think great weight should be given, actually. Yeah. Um, It, it's so important, um, and if we take our own health improvement plan, Rushmore, Thank you. Yeah. we've got it in this about healthy weight, obesity, and the issues um, we see a significant rise in overweight and obesity among children. I was a governor at the Connaught School, which is, takes uh, children from a less deprived area, should we say, more less deprived areas in Aldershot, and the problems. Uh, caused there by obesity and overweight children um, using these fast, I shouldn't say fast food because some fast food is good. It's junk food really. Um, but but I'm, I'm not particularly against McDonald's per se, um, just all the American junk food we get over here which I think we don't need. Um, and if I look at uh, the uh, in our important, in, in our own plan, we allude to the, um, and I can find my bits of paper here, the uh, National Health Child Programme, which we take at our uh, health programme. And we say, and I'll quote, in England, most people are overweight or obese. This includes 61.3% of adults and 30% of children aged between 2 and 15. People who are overweight have a higher risk of getting type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and certain cancers. Excess weight can also make it more difficult for people to find work and keep work, and it can affect self-esteem and mental health. Health problems associated with being overweight or obese cost the NHS more than £5 billion every year. Now, time and time again, in these times of constraints, we're told, well, we've got to get out of our silos, we've got to look across the way, we've got to do things differently. I can't find it, but somewhere in one of our papers, I read it, that we produce at Rushmore, we've got to find ways of doing things differently. Now, I know there's planning laws and all the rest of that, but I think somehow we as councillors have got to take responsibility for our future children. <laughs> and, it, and it's on that health aspect alone that I cannot support this application. Thank you very much. I have Councillor Diane Bedford, followed by Councillor Roland Ibs. Thank you, Chair. Um, at the end of the day, this is an incredibly emotional decision we make, whether we're for or against it. It's really hard for all of you sitting out there behind me and in front of me, and for us as well, because it's actually, for me, it's incredibly hard because I was uh, born in... Sorry very much. Uh, uh, so, sorry, Councillor Bedford. Um, Councillor Cooper, could you pass your microphone over to Councillor Bedford? We seem to be struggling with the mic at the moment. Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, I mean, I was born in Cove, and I, I'm obviously no spring chicken, so I've been around a long time, and I remember the Tumble Down Dick when it was a fantastic venue way before the music. And as a child, I wanted to go in there as, and as an adult to drink and eat because it looked so fantastic, and I did do that. I only went in there once in latter years, but I know many people did go there, and they really enjoyed the music. My niece was one of them, loved it, but she said it was very run down. Nobody seemed to care for it. Um, 
when I first heard, when it first, first closed and the planning came in um, to change it, we didn't know who was going to have it, but to sell it and knock it down, I must admit, I thought I was going to have an apoplectic fit because I loved that building. Because as a child, the Tumble Down Dick and, and the Clock House were icons to me. They were just wonderful places to go past. Um, and the fact that at the moment, it may, it will not be knocked down if this plan goes ahead. Well, some of it will be saved is, is, is something. It doesn't mean to say that it takes my emotional out of it because it does disturb me. I'm not a McDonald's fan. Hundreds, hundreds are. I'm not a McDonald's fan. Um, and I think it's very difficult to make decisions on this. I do have some concerns. One is the traffic, and I, I know all the tests have been done, and. Uh, it, it uh, would appear that it would take the traffic, but I, for me, I'm not too sure about that. I'm not quite sure the, the question that um, Councillor Grattan said about central reservations was ordered, because it's something that I did wonder about, whether there would be some form of, uh, it just goes ahead, that there would be reservations down the centre. So that's, that's my question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bedford. Uh, before we go to Councillor Dibbs, I'm going to ask uh, um, for the officers to reverse on those points as well. So if kind of Jim Pett is on the transport issues, and actually it may be useful if we were to have officers um, coming back to us on the health concerns as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, really, I think the, the only real issue for me or, that's come there is, is about the central reservation and, and the guardrail question. Um, that is something which um, we, we have actually gone back to McDonald's and asked them to look at, and they are in agreement to um, putting in um, some guard railing along that section of, of the central reservation on the Farnborough Road. Um, there is some potential, I think, for more people to cross the road there, um, and uh, I think it would certainly improve safety in, in, that, po in that section of the Farnborough Road. Um, the actual detail of that um, we still have to work out in, uh, completely with Hampshire County Council um, about the nature of, of the works themselves but they, they also are, they are in agreement that um, they could there could be a section of guard railing going there it would be compatible with the uh, treatment that there are on other sections of, the, of this part of the Farnborough Road they they will be carrying out that that will be done as part of the um, the section 278 works to the highway should this be approved, Chairman? Thank you very much, Ms. Pettit. Um, and Keith Holland's on the health issues. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I, I do understand uh, members' concerns about the, uh, the health issue. Um, it has been uh, raised by many objectors. Um, and indeed, that is why we have sought uh, legal advice uh, on the issue of taking this into account with this particular application. It must be noted that the site does fall within Farnborough Town Centre where there are a number of similar uh, establishments um, and, the property, and the property can be used as a restaurant selling the same type of food as that proposed without the need for further planning permission. It's a very important material consideration for you to take into account. Our core strategy policies in, in relation to health focus on the provision of uh, positive uh, action on provision of open space, health and leisure facilities, rather than preventing uses or limiting consumer choice, which we are advised not to do. Legal counsel, as I say, has been sought and has advised that since the proposal is in a town centre and not in close proximity to a school, any, any, it would reduce the considerations to general health concerns as opposed to concerns about the impact of the proposal on another use, such as a local school. In those circumstances, we are advised that it is likely to weigh little against the grant of planning permission. I'd also like to point out, because this has been mentioned to us, that there are a number of authorities in the country that have specific policies um, about um, uh, locating um, takeaways in particular in close proximity to schools. But both examples quoted in Dudley and in Islington 
um, wouldn't actually result in a reason for refusal in this particular case. In Dudley, they have identified that within town centres, uh, no more than two A5 uses, takeaway uses, um, should be next to each other. Um, and out of town centres, at least 400 metres from schools. In Islington, uh, they do resist food takeaways, uh, but within 20, uh, sorry, 200 metres of schools, um, and that is further away um, than this particular site. I must reiterate that a takeaway use um, is an acceptable town centre use according to national policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have an indication from Councillor Roland Dibbs. Thank you, Chairman. If we were here defending the public house which existed there in the early 1970s, I would definitely be defending it. At that time, it was a reasonable public house. It had a very good restaurant there, which was used by quite a, quite a number of organisations. And when I used to come back to England on holiday at that time, I used to use the restaurant very regularly. In the latter years, though, it was not a place that I would have gone to. I advised my son, I advised my son against using it, because every time I went there, past there in the evenings, there was usually a police van outside there for what? For what I don't know, but I can only guess. Excuse me, please, can we allow Councillor Wellendips to be heard? Thank you. We, we have to think about the viability and sustainability of whatever, whatever is um, proposed for the site. I, I've heard proposals that they could possibly use back, back to an entertainment centre. What we have to remember is we've got the Princess Hall in... Uh, Can I, can, I, can I carry on? Yeah. Sorry, please do carry on, Councillor Dibbs. We have the Princess Hall in Aldershot, which has first-class entertainment all the year round, but it has to be heavily subsidised by the council. We've got the West End uh, Theatre, which has the same type of um, entertainment as, 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 as being mooted, should be returned to the tumble-down dick. That has to be heavily subsidised by the county council. Now, how... how anybody could think that they could, they could make this place into a viable um, centre again without subsidy, I, I really don't understand it. And anyway, we've had absolutely no proposals come to, to this council for any other use apart from the one for McDonald's. And all we can do is to do the only, the only application we, we can deal with is the one before us tonight and that is the one for McDonald's. I'm not a fan of McDonald's myself, and I've, I, I listened with uh, great interest with what Councillor Russ said. I've got a great regard for Councillor Russ, and I, I value his opinion, having worked with him on health issues in the past. Um, but it's like everything else. It's, it's things taken in moderation. I don't mind taking my grandchildren to McDonald's, say, once every two or three weeks. I certainly, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't advise them to go there every day, though. And um, it, 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 it's like everything else in life is that you have to decide your own lifestyle. And if you've got people to guide you, then take it in moderation. And I'm sure that if it is used in moderation, then it, it, it won't have a great effect. Um, the traffic issues, I think they've, they've been well covered. Um, has been mentioned. Uh, I think there's been uh, comments made on, on the uh, delivery vehicles using it, but as has been pointed out, the, tank, the tankers get in and out of the petrol station um, without too much of a problem. And the, the access from the, uh, the egress from the um, tumble down dick will be protected by the uh, uh, pedestrian crossing just to the south, so that every, every uh, few minutes, the traffic stops from the pedestrian crossing up to the thing, which, which will give plenty of time for traffic to, for the heavy vehicles to leave there. So I've got no real problem with that. Um, McDonald's, they do, they do have a, um, a reputation for clearing up rubbish, as we've seen with other, um, as we've seen particularly with, with the one in Aldershot uh, in Union Street, where they do litter picks regularly several times a day. 
And as they say, they don't just pick up McDonald's rubbish, they pick up everybody else's rubbish, which there's no short supply. Um, if I had a vote, I would be voting for this, in, uh, for voting in favor of this. Unfortunately, I have to keep my hands by my side there. Thank you very much, Councillor Dibbs. Uh, I have a brief follow-up from Councillor Marsh, then I have a few comments before I'll hand us over to Keith Hollands for something up. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Um, in view of the barracking I got a little bit earlier, um, could, could I ask, I think probably Katie Bailey is the one to answer this, why was the application for the to have this building listed refused? It has been twice been requested that this be listed as a, but it's been refused twice. Uh, actually, I'm going to ask Keith Holland to come back on that point. Thank you. Chairman, I was going to cover that in my summing up, so if that's okay for, for Councillor Marsh, I'll cover it then. Thank you very much. If there are no further comments from members, I just have a few further points to make uh, on behalf of having listened to the debate. And I'd like to start by thanking the officers for what is a very thorough report covering a great deal of information and all the relevant issues which have been raised in what I think has been quite a healthy democratic debate. Uh, I would like to reject entirely the, reject the, the, the implications of bias on the officers' part. Um, there is no reason whatsoever they would be biased. And in fact, if they wanted to have a quieter life, they'd have, they'd have found it much easier to, waive, um, to, to reject this. In fact, I think uh, what we have seen is a scrupulously fair and honest report from officers. Uh, I'd like to thank um, all the officers around the table, all, all the councillors around the table, for what's been a very good and spirited debate this evening. Um, from my own perspective, I'd say that this, that, that this is a building of local importance and interest, and it's uh, good to see a building which was at risk being uh, retained in this way. Um, I share the dim view which many around the table have expressed uh, about Bride Hall, and frankly, we'll be glad to see the sites um, changing hands. Uh, I think this is, a, 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 this is an application which is relevant. This is an application. Th 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 this is a significant application for Farmer Town Centre. So, um, so, you know, I will be voting on this matter. Um, I'll now hand over to Keith Holland to sum up. Um, thank you, Chairman. I would just like to uh, sweep up on, on on a number of issues, and I do understand that it's um, it's a very uh, emotive case. The first thing I'd like to um, address members on is what you're being asked to consider, and just as important, what you're not being asked to consider. You need to determine a single, simple planning application to use the former public house as a restaurant and takeaway. As I've mentioned before, the restaurant element of the proposed use doesn't actually need planning permission, since under permitted development regulations, it can be used as such without any further permission. So it is the proposed use as a takeaway, together with the physical changes to the building, access and car park, that members need to focus on. You are not being asked to choose or to state a preference between alternative uses, between a restaurant and takeaway or its use as a pub with a music venue. The pub is its lawful planning use and can be used as such straight away. Your decision is to determine if the proposed use and building work is acceptable in planning terms. Secondly, I'd like to address the effect on the building of local importance. The building is considered to be of local importance, but has been, <coughs> excuse me, but has been vacant for over five years and needs to be reoccupied with an active use that will help to restore it. You will see from the report that it is considered that the proposal does represent a viable way of retaining the significant parts of the building. Comment has been made by objectors that it is only the facade that will be retained, but it is clear that it would be far more substantial than that, retaining and refurbishing the principal two-storey elements, which are the most familiar and recognisable parts of the building. Claims that parts of the building to the rear are much earlier are not supported by specialists from English Heritage and the Department of Culture, Media and Sport, when they declined to add the building to the national list earlier this year because they could find no evidence. 
the proposal meets the provisions and follows the guidance given in the council's adopted buildings of local importance supplementary planning guidance turning to the issue of the community right to bid and the asset of community value the building does currently appear on the council's list of assets of community value since this legislation is relatively new we have sought legal advice as to how to treat this issue when determining the planning application the legal effect of being registered as an asset of community value is that the community right to buy that's uh, sorry the community right to bid and that's an important difference the community right to bid may apply however the community right to bid would only come into effect if the property was placed on the market for sale when a moratorium could be invoked to enable local community groups to make a bid for it but it is not up for sale and so the community right to bid cannot come into effect the applicants McDonald's already have an agreement to purchase dating from before the introduction of the community right to buy legislation last year and before the property was registered as an asset of community value moreover even if the current proposal were to fall away it does not follow as some have suggested that the community right to bid will be automatically will automatically arise the right would only arise if the owner chose to sell the property at some point in the future the present owner has indicated it has no intention of selling the property on the basis that the existing lease of the site does not expire until 2022 and delivers a, su a substantial rent albeit that the property is vacant on the available information it does not appear likely that the right to bid will arise regardless of the committee's decision on the present application this evening therefore in these particular circumstances the legal advice that we have been given is that only limited weight can be given to this right in consideration of the planning application and it cannot be the determining factor chairman i would like to finally uh, mention a word about um, objections that have been raised you will be aware that there have been a large number of objections these are set out and addressed in the report to committee and it is right and proper to take account of them but members will know it's not the numbers for and against a proposal that is most significant after all it is not a public referendum on whether a proposal should be allowed or not it is the issues raised in support or objection that are the factors that we must pay most attention to planning is a quasi judicial process it requires you to look at the evidence to assess its relevance and importance and reach a balanced decision using material planning considerations your officers views after careful consideration of all the issues is that the proposal does conform with national and local policy it would return a valued local building to an active use and will contribute to the regeneration of Farnborough Town Centre. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, bearing in mind the uh, points just raised in the summing up there by Keith Holland, um, well, now we have this matter to a vote. Uh, the recommendation is to grant subject to unilateral undertaking. As previously indicated, I will be voting on this matter. Uh, can I please see all those in favour? Thank you. And can I see all those against? Thank you very much. That, that is passed. Thank you. Please can I ask for order in the public gallery as we move on to item five. <laughs> item, item five relates to the same site and it, 
Excuse me, please, can I have order in the public gallery? Of course. We'll allow a couple of minutes for those who wish to leave. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item five relates to the same, uh, to the same site and is in relation to uh, uh, um, advertising facing. Um, I will hand over once again to Sarita Jones to take us through this item. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there is an update to the report which I will give at the beginning in that the totem, the 6.5 metre totem that was proposed at the front of the site in this location has been deleted from the proposal. Um, an satisfactory solution could not be achieved, so uh, the applicant chose to withdraw it from consideration this evening. The signage basically falls into two categories. You have the building proposed, uh, the signage proposed on the building here, and then you have the signage associated with the parking area and the drive through. This is a, an indication on the elevations as to what is being proposed. We have a corporate sign on the portico. We have a sign, uh, a internally illuminated M sign there. The tumble down dick sign is being retained on the front elevation there. We have a, a illuminated sign in that location and on that location at either end of the building. And then backing onto the car park, we have the signs that relate to the collection points from the drive through. This is just indicative of the type of signage you would find um, going through the drive through itself. Um, there are more detailed uh, information in the agenda. This is the building. As you can see, there's already an existing sign there, and there is the existing sign that's being retained in that location. And we see that in more detail here. And then when you turn to the other end of the building, you will see that there is a sign there. The signs on the building are considered to be entirely compatible with the existing character of the building and are similar to the signs that have been displayed on this site for many years. With regard to the signs that are within the car parking area and the drive through area, they will be largely screened by the building. Um, and in this regard, no material harm to the character of the area is considered to result. I would draw members' attention to the fact that the determining factors in an advert application are amenity and safety, and those are the only issues to be considered. Again, we see from the other end the sign that's located there and there. Again, very similar to the signs that have been displayed historically on this building. There are some further updates um, on the amendment sheet, which just clarifies some representations we've had. And we've also updated the conditions, up, uh, the approved condition um, with the approved plans because we needed to delete reference to the totem sign in its entirety. Uh, there is an amended recommendation, which is to grant advert consent subject to the conditions and informatives and as amended. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Sarita. Uh, once again, on this matter, we have uh, two speakers. Um, just to remind the speakers and indeed uh, councillors around the table that um, this matter relates to uh, the proposed signage. So uh, please do confine your comments to immunity and highway safety. Um, against the application, we have uh, Ms. Claire Marshall. Uh, and just as a reminder. And just as a reminder, speakers have three minutes. Thank you. You have to forgive me. I'm not quite used to this. I my first objection is in terms of light pollution and the negative effects it can have on motorists and health. 
For motorists, this can be decreased visibility, driver confusion and distraction, which is enhanced by the cluttered nature of the design. Inability to visually adapt to quickly to dimly lit areas, especially combined with the high lux type of lights proposed. Light pollution can interfere with the natural 24 hour cycles of light and darkness that we use to regulate daily patterns and health. Effects on humans are varied and include increased headaches, fatigue, medically defined stress, and increases in anxiety levels, whilst the light trespass into the residents' homes can disrupt sleep patterns. This could be especially prevalent in this location due to the proposed lux of these lights being 600, a 114% increase in lux from those already installed at Farm Brigade, which produces a lux of 280. This proposal dramatically affects Farnborough Road. It would increase carbon emissions and energy waste. This would be counteracting nationwide and EU initiatives to reduce carbon emissions and encourage in a, in a, ugh, sorry, efficient energy usage. The adverts themselves should also be taken into consideration. With a target audience of families, should we be encouraging illuminations which are attractive to children? When you have noted, and I quote, the National Child Measurement Programme for Hampshire so shows obesity prevalence in Rushmore children year R and year six to be higher than the Hampshire average and third highest of the 11 local authorities across Hampshire. In 2007, 11.8% of children in year R and 18.1% in year six were obese. You say it's the parents' decision, but do you have to make it so attractive to the children, make it easier for the parents? Visually, the added illuminations and signage do not complement the style of the building or the area and would be intrusive on that road. And further, I note that it is not health and safety or warning signs that are illuminated, just the advertising. So their signs aren't even there for safety. National policy encourages us to conserve heritage assets in a manner appropriate to their significance so that they can be enjoyed for their contribution to the quality of life and future generations. This development is not a fulfillment of that. Finally, it should be noted that no other building along that road or even the air show use this type of advertising. And if McDonald's road estimates and consumer usage are to be believed, then it is not required and only serves to create an unfair advantage in terms of marketing to the public, which would see local businesses at a disadvantage. I urge you to reject this proposal and work with the community to fulfill your own words that Rushmore in 2026 will be a thriving, innovative and attractive borough proud of its heritage. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have Mr. Mike Williams, uh, who will be speaking in support of this application. Oh, it's 20.5 now. Sorry. That was 20.5 was the clarification. Thank you. Uh, good evening. As I say today, my name is Michael Williams, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak again at committee tonight. Further to my earlier presentation on the planning application, I would like to discuss the advert application associated with the restaurant. It is our standard approach to split the proposed advertisements into three categories in order to clearly demonstrate those adverts for which we require consent. The McDonald's design team do not take a blanket approach when applying for adverts. We make a careful assessment of the site and surrounding area and evaluate which adverts are required in each location. In addition, we apply for and include on the drawings all signs that we intend to erect, including those that do not need express consent. We have taken into account the nature of the building and the refurbishment we propose. I would like to present our proposals to you and share the design rationale for each of the three elements proposed. The first is the car park and the site signage. Our proposed signage suite incorporates a more streamlined sign shape using natural colours such as khaki green, white, brown and grey. This will integrate well with the surroundings and setting of this site. The proposed signs have been placed to allow the store to operate properly and efficiently. Their location is defined by the layout and position of the building, assisting in the smooth operation of the restaurant and drive through Almost half of these signs are Department of Transport signs, which already benefit from deemed consent. We have shown all of the signs including those which do not require consent to make sure you are aware of what the overall scheme will look like. Secondly, the, adver the building advertisements. Careful consideration has been given, in, given to the positioning of each face design and the nature of the building we are converting. 
All adverts use LED lighting and our electricity is provided from 100% renewable sources. This is a town centre location, but we have applied a sensitive and restrictive design to the adverts, keeping them to a minimum so that the signs will not appear out of place in the wider site context. We have retained the tumbled down dick sign to the principal frontage. The sign will remain in its current form and will be refurbished if necessary. Signs on the principal frontage have been kept to a similar provision to a typical public house with illumination kept within IEEE guidelines. Adverts to the rear of the building principally identify the drive through booths and are not visible from the wider surrounding area. And finally, the totem sign, following comments from the conservation area officer and as confirmed by your planning officer, we have redrawn the totem sign from the application. We trust members accept the careful design approach taken and careful consideration of matters raised during the course of the application. Thank you for listening and once again I hope you'll support our plans. Thank you very much. Uh, before I move the debate on to councillors, um, I understand that uh, officers would like to come back to us on some of the points which have been raised. So I believe uh, Richard Ward, our environmental um, monitoring officer, will come in. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the proposed lighting is, has a maximum illumination of 600 candelas per square metres. Um, we've assessed the level of lighting against the, 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 the best available guidance, which is the Institute of Lighting Engineers technical report, which is brightness of illuminated advertisements. And within that, that document, they've, they have recommended limits of illumination for internally and externally illuminated signage for both lit zones and unlit zones. An, an unlit zone being an area where there is no road or footpath lighting. Um, all the signage proposed meets the limit set within an unlit zone. A lit zone has double the, 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 the value, the, the limits associated with it. So environmental health are quite satisfied that there will be no impact on amenity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do any councillors wish to comment on this application? No. It, oh, apologies. Uh, uh, Councillor Diane Bedford. Can I just ask? Sorry, we have microphone issues again. Uh, Councillor Cooper, could you pass yours? Thank you. It's a second one. Can I just ask, as you approach from from the, 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 the towards the roundabout, there's nothing to indicate that it's actually a, a drive-through. I've just got a feeling people might just be come up and screech through as they can drive through. I'm not against the lighting, but there's no signage. I should say it's a drive-through. Does that? Well, maybe. Sorry, just a just a thought. Thank you, Sarita. Would you like to respond? Yeah. Um, the one thing, uh, the information on the totem will include reference to the drive-through, but because an acceptable design could not be achieved, that's why it was withdrawn. So that information will be achieved on the totem sign, as I understand it. Yeah, it is anticipated that McDonald's will be submitting a further application shortly for a totem. Thank you. I think that clears things up. Um, are there any further comments? No, in which case the recommendation is to grant, bearing in mind the amendments. Uh, can I see all those in favour, please? And are there any against? One. Okay, thank you very much. That is passed.